Hi, and welcome to a new year with the uh, standalone or teacher-led options for science. This orientation relates to the two courses in which we use Holt textbooks, and that's biology and chemistry. I'm going to be showing you the chemistry one because there's one thing that's specific to chemistry that I wanted to include. But for biology, you can follow along with pretty much everything is the same. So here we have our chemistry flex A course, which is what I've called it for a brief uh, as the shortened title. But this is a chemistry course, and remember that these don't have anchors, they don't have portfolio samples. You're doing things as you go along. A lot of the same things that the kids doing anchors are doing will be included in this course, but they're not going to be labeled as anchors per se. Okay, so up here we have my general information of how to contact me, what my work hours are. Please feel free to add me on Skype, but please, if it if it has some kind of weird Skype username that I don't recognize, please put a brief introduction so I know who you are. The eight to four mountain means that if you're in Pacific time, please subtract an hour. So that's seven to three Pacific time. The news forum here is just for general announcements. And that's, you know, I'll be traveling at this time. I may not have office hours during a certain week due to testing or whatever, but that's gonna be my brief way of getting information out to everyone. We have the Go On campaign, and as you know, IDEA is a Go On school. So if you'd like to be, if you'd like to look at things that you're interested in, in chemistry related careers or subject areas of study in science, I have two PDFs related to Idaho programs of study. So feel free to take a look at uh, those at your leisure. So first of all, we have the course information you need toggle. And sometimes they say toggle, sometimes they don't. I'm getting rid of the toggle on this one, so it won't say that after this orientation is done. But regardless, you'll see a live link to the syllabus, and that's here. And when you click on it, it takes you out to the syllabus that is found on the Idaho IDEA website. This is live updated by me. So if anything has to change with regards to pacing or schedule or something like that, it's updated live and it's easy for you to access at once. Feel free to download a copy if you choose to, but you don't need to because you can always refer back to it in the course information you need section. The class policies relate to late work uh, assignments and also on plagiarism. And boys and girls, you've had the plagiarism discussion. You've signed the academic honesty contract. It's on every single syllabus. So for the love of goodness sake, please do not plagiarize your assignments. Uh, it's a really simple thing to avoid doing. And if you're not sure how, please see me or any one of the other friendly secondary teachers that we have at IDEA, because uh, it's not just me, it annoys, it's everyone. Uh, this will also prevent you from doing things like getting scholarships, getting into National Honor Society. And if you do it at the college level, it can result in you being thrown out of college. All things that we want to avoid. So if you're not sure if you're plagiarizing or if you're not or what it exactly is, Please see any of us, we'll be happy to help you. There's a link also to the FET simulations. These will be a generalized FET simulations. Um, FET is uh, for physics and simulations, but it's expanded since then. And FET simulations uh, will be mostly used in chemistry, although a little bit in biology. And uh, those will be uh, direct to you, and we will be incorporating them in some of our assignments. So just so you know what that is, it comes out of the University of Colorado. Now, I will also place a book link uh, into the place where you can get your book. But if you aren't sure, I'm going to show you how to get there now. It's myhrw.com, my.hrw.com. And you just simply log in. And if you have more than one whole textbook, it will show up in your My Subscriptions. Now, for the science Holt book based classes, biology and chemistry specifically, the only thing you're going to be using on the hrw.com site is the book. Anything else that relates to the book, I have downloaded just to ensure that you have access to them. Even if the HRW site has uh, you know, a mental breakdown and it stops working, you'll still be able to get to it in Moodle. So you'll just click on your online textbook, 
and it's got all of the pages and you'll just go from there. So you're just going to read your ebook right there and you can go to the page numbers once you're there just by typing in the page number and clicking the word go. So um, it will tell you what you need to read. And that brings me to the next section. Chemistry with Reitler. Now this is specific to chemistry students, biology students, you have a different time. But chemistry with Reitler, chemistry students, you're gonna wanna attend. Because one, I'm going to do a brief mini lesson um, on something that we're gonna be covering that week, especially on how to do certain problems. Uh, and it will be very brief, it'll be like 10 minutes. But those how to do certain problems are gonna save your bacon so many times. So make sure you're attending if at all possible. I will not be recording these sessions, so keep that in mind because I can't go pull them back up. You need to attend life if at all possible. And for those of you taking dual credit classes online, I've tried to schedule around those online times so that it doesn't conflict this week. So they will, or during the week, there will be Mondays and Wednesdays from three to four mountain or two to three Pacific. So as you can tell, we're not gonna go late because that's when I'm done for the day. So please make sure that you're attending live. This will be through BlueJeans, which is an online web conferencing program. And uh, this link will take you out to the BlueJeans link and you just select which way you wanna join in. Do you wanna join by phone? Do you wanna join by Skype? Do you wanna join by your browser? What do you wanna do? It gives you a lot of options. Um, I highly recommend though, turning off your video because I have, fairly low bandwidth in my area. And so the more video feeds I'm receiving, the less bandwidth you're gonna get from me and that's gonna be a bad thing. So please turn off your camera before we start on uh, the chemistry help sessions. And if you've not been on BlueJeans before, please make sure that you've accessed it at least 10 minutes before your first session with me. That way it will ensure that you've had time to download any drivers you may need. And if you're accessing via an iPad, you'll probably wanna download the free BlueJeans app. Um, it's in the app store, you can get that anyway. Okay, so as you can see, we've got the month of September showing. And the reason why we have only that month showing is because I want to make sure that you're not overwhelmed with the sheer number of weeks. There's 16 weeks in the first semester, not including exam weeks. So I don't wanna overwhelm you with 18 tabs for you to be looking at. Additionally, I'm building seven courses as we go along. So I'm putting these things in, in the background. And that's why you see that not available down at the bottom. You'll have those tabs open to you starting the third week of the previous month. So in this case, September 16th to the 22nd, somewhere in that week, I will open up October. And then somewhere in the third week of October, I'll open November and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. You can work ahead if you do choose to. But keep in mind uh, that I do have those closed for a reason so that I can work on it, make sure you have lots of really good stuff in there, and also not overwhelm you with the sheer number of tabs. Once we've done with a, a month, I will move those down below the current month uh, in order. And so that way, um, and I'll move all four blocks at a time. So that way, uh, you've got the most current stuff, the four most current weeks on top starting with each month time. Okay, so each of these toggles is set up identically, so let's go through them. The first section says what you need to read. Okay, so that, on, and it, if you'll see here, the online textbook is linked out to the HRW site. So if you are missing that uh, HRW bookmark, then you can link from there. So you can read pages one through 15 in your online textbook that week. As you can see, I'm not overwhelming you with the sheer number of pages that we're gonna cover. So that should be pretty easy. Now the lectures to watch in the very beginning of the semester, there's a bunch of lectures and then it, it peters off as we go down in the number of weeks. So don't get, a, don't get overwhelmed by this giant number of lectures. And one of these like science versus wonder and the five branches of chemistry, those aren't me. It's not just necessarily my voice, but these are important ones that I wanna make sure that you've seen. So make sure that you're taking a look at them. So watch the lectures after you've read the online textbook, watch the lectures. Then you're going to do the things to do section. 
there's three things to do, and it's usually three per week unless there's a very large activity that we're doing. And you can see that it's got two different icons in this case. It's got pure or impure. This is a, a discussion board, and I'm going to click on that so you can see what that looks like. So it says, introduce yourself. Let us know about a bit about your interest. After you've read section one and chapter one, I want you to describe and give an example of what you think is a pure substance. What makes a substance impure? How do you think purity or its lack would affect outcomes in chemistry? And again, I want to know what you think. This is where plagiarism comes in. Any evidence that you're parroting a website or the textbook will create a much lower grade in this discussion board. Please don't do it. I want to hear what you think makes a pure substance or what makes an impure substance. Uh, I don't care what the textbook writers think. They're the experts in the subject matter, but I want you to tell me what you think. Be sure to use the PIN method, and it's all highlighted in bold print. So it says you're going to respond to other students in this discussion by being positive, adding something to the discussion that is interesting, and asking a question that would be nice to know, and then add a rating of his or her post. The discussion board isn't a discussion unless you're responding to questions that are asked of you. If you're just going in there, putting in your discussion board prompt, answering the prompts, and then you're responding to three other kids by saying, hey, nice job. First of all, if that's all you're saying, you're not going to get scored on that one. But if you're saying, hey, nice job, that's really cool. Oh, I heard about this article that did this or whatever, you know, however you're responding to it. Um, and then you ask them something that's not, that you would think would be nice to know. They're going to be asking the same things of you. Answer them. Because if you're just going in there one day and you're putting all your stuff out there and you're responding to the other kids and that's all you do on that one day, then that's called trolling. That's not a discussion. Um, so don't troll. Actually discuss. Interact. Because discussions are two-way streets. You have to actually interact with one another. Uh, it's a personal pet peeve, but it's also something that's, you know, just polite. So make sure that you're going back and forth. Okay, so that's the discussion board, and discussion boards run about every two weeks, and they're open for two weeks. These hand-in icons means that it's actually an assignment. So here's one on a virtual lab. And this one will actually start running inside the instructions, which is kind of nice. And you can download the week worksheet right off the front page. Once you've done that, you're going to turn in the worksheet. So what you do is once it brings up your lab report, you're going to click right there on that icon that I'm highlighting with my finger right here. Um, and that will open up a document and make sure that you've turned that in. And that's what you're going to submit when you click on Add Submission, and then you add it in. Now, a note on submissions. One of the things to keep in mind is that very many times you may be working on something and then have to go do something else. So you save what you've been working on, but it's not completed. And then you go do something else, and then you come back and you work on it some more, and you forget to save it, then you upload it. And so I end up getting a half-finished paper. So one of the things that I've always suggested to students to do, and what I'd highly recommend that you do, is that you put the word done at the end of it. Um, you know, so it would say like chapter one, section one, virtual lab, done. Once you've wrote done in the title of the, of the uh, submission file, that will help you remember that you actually finished it and it's okay to upload. You don't have to, but it's a good it's a good practice in online classes to do that so that you know you've actually finished all parts of the assignment. Okay, and then there's a the fun stuff section. The fun stuff section is just quick little review games or little informational videos that are actually funny or entertaining that will help you review the material that we've covered that week. So it's not required. Anything from up from what to read all the way to the bottom of things to do is required, but the fun stuff is not required. It is simply fun stuff. So if you choose to do it, great. It will help you review. If you choose not to, that's fine too. And as you can see in the second week where the discussion board 
you need to actually finish up your discussion board. And I'll put a reminder most of the time. And here's one of those FET simulations. Now, the only thing that hasn't, um, hasn't been included is this icon here with the check mark, and that's the test. The test will be in the chapter. It will randomly generate from the test bank, uh, all things being equal, and it works right, then yay. Um, and then, you know, you'll just complete the test. Generally, tests have one attempt, but if they don't, uh, they'll have two. And I'll take the average, not the highest grade, the average. So that means that if you get in there and you just kind of don't, you don't have your I's dotted, your T's crossed, and you get in there, you're not going to do very well. And if you take it a second time and do great, it's still going to average out. So make sure that you're ready before you open those tests. As a point of note, the chapter tests will close on the last date of the week that they're in. So this chapter one test closes on September 15th. That date is firm. So if you pass that date and you didn't take your chapter one test, I'm sorry, you missed the de deadline. There are some extensions automatically built in for the assignments for a lower grade. You know, so you can submit late assignments, but you cannot submit late tests. And you can't submit late assignments for very much longer, but it will automatically give that in for you. So keep that in mind uh, when it comes to chapter tests. You have to do them during that week. You have to stay on pace because chemistry, especially, and biology are so diverse and complex that if you get behind, you're really behind the eight ball. And so I'm trying to ensure that that doesn't happen. Once the test closes, you'll be able to see all the right answers on the test. So that should help you out as you go along. Um, I will be grading throughout the week. I don't guarantee the grades until the Wednesday following the close date, though. So uh, just keep that in mind for any assignments when you're looking for the uh, right answers or the an or your scores. Chapter tests do feed the final exam, which is required in this course. So make sure you keep that in mind. Um, and that's about it. So that's what we do in chemistry. And if you have any questions, of course, email me. I'll be happy to help you. Biology is the same thing. Uh, except for the office hours. Biology, your office hours are from three, uh, 2 to 3 Mountain Time or 1 to 2 Pacific on Wednesdays. Okay, so that's yours. For biology, I'll repeat that. It's from 2 to 3 Mountain or 1 to 2 Pacific on Wednesdays only. So feel free to join me with any questions you may have. Chemistry people, you've got your two because you get the mini lesson. And again, if you have any other questions, by all means, please email me. I'll be happy to help you out. I'm looking forward to working with you this year and have a great day.